Hello, I'm Jason Harrelson with Harrelson Trumpets, and today we're going to discuss mouthpiece receiver gap just for a moment, uh, simply because some people don't know what it is, and some people don't know why it's important, and quite a few people are unclear as to how to measure it, and I'll just give you my take on it. If you are interested in more, you can go to my blog, and way at the beginning of my blog, if you click on history, I think one of the first few posts was a republished version of uh, my take on GAP, which is much longer than what I'm going to talk about now. So, we're going to look at this horn, and uh, if you look closely here, you can see that there's very little gap between the end of the mouthpiece and the beginning of the receiver. This is not mouthpiece gap. This has nothing to do with mouthpiece gap. The vast majority of questions that come in to Harrelson Trumpets that Paul and I answer usually are related to this. People see this, and if they see a gap, they ask about it and ask to have it removed, thinking that it'll change the way the horn plays. Here's a different mouthpiece, and you see there's a wider gap between the end of the mouthpiece and the beginning of the receiver. This has nothing to do with mouthpiece gap. This is what we call an external visual gap. And the reason there's gap here is because if there were none, then it would probably fit one horn perfect, but others it would bottom out and it wouldn't fit. So we're going to completely remove exterior visual gap uh, from this discussion. Now we're going to talk about mouthpiece gap. Mouthpiece gap is when your mouthpiece goes into the receiver and does not touch the end of the lead pipe. So there's a lead pipe inside here, and the lead pipe probably ends right about there. And there's a little gap between the end of the mouthpiece and the beginning of the lead pipe. That varies from horn to horn. On some trumpets it could be an eighth of an inch, which is about average. Uh, sometimes if you've had a shorter shank on the back bore of your mouthpiece, if you've had a custom mouthpiece made, then that gap could be wider. The wider the gap, typically for most players, the more difficult it is to slide up and down the range of the instrument. Your instrument will usually lock into each interval, interval so hard that it can become difficult to play high notes. Uh, if there's no gap at all, and the mouthpiece and the lead pipe actually almost touch each other, or they do, then that's considered no gap, and that creates a less resistant blow, so it feels like your horn is larger than it is, a small bore horn with no gap will feel like a large bore horn. And vice versa, if you have a lot of gap on a large bore, it will feel like a small bore. And that's simply because when air exits the mouthpiece, it is already moving in the direction of the tube, but it hits the outer edge lip of the lead pipe. So imagine the lead pipe is this ring. When the air hits this lip right around this edge, it creates turbulence and it actually turns around the opposite direction. So the air hits it and bounces back towards the player that's blowing at it. When that happens, uh, it creates a, a feeling of resistance. So if there's no gap and they touch, then that does not happen. With gap, the wider the gap, the more turbulence you have. So to review, the reason you would want your gap set when your horn is built or adjusted after you've bought a different mouthpiece and you have your trumpet uh, is simply because it may feel too tight or too open. So the less gap you have, the more free blowing your horn is. The more gap, the less free blowing it is. All right. And I have found that around a tenth of an inch or what people would measure as 0 .100 inches is optimum average for most players. I personally play with almost no gap, uh, but that's unusual. So, why would you want it changed? Simply because you want to fine tune the feeling of your instrument so that you can either lock in on notes easier or you don't lock in on, on the notes as, as much. And I'll demonstrate quickly here. If I'm playing up and down the range of an instrument, I'm playing each note, <laughs> Okay, I'm just playing the notes, tonguing each one. I don't feel a lot of difference between note to note. But if I make a wide interval leap, leap like a one or two octave leap, when I do that, 
If I have no gap at all, then it will be very easy to put as much air through the horn as I like. And then I, the control issue is put on me, my lips, my aperture, and inside my mouth it has to control so every little piece finite, so finitely. There has to be a very tight tolerance of everything I do in order to hit a high note if I have almost no gap. If you have a lot of gap, those notes lock in so easy that you may lock in on a lower note by accident. So that's the main difference, and you can hear it in slurs. <laughs> Those are all slurs rather than tonguing, and the note will lock in nice and comfortably. Now what is comfortable to me is probably different for you, it's different for every player, and that is why I set the gap for individual players. So to wrap up, uh, there is on my blog and on our website instructions on how to measure gap. And if you read these and you look at the diagrams, it should be very simple. Just keep in mind that you're always measuring what's inside. So you'll take a measurement inside the receiver, where something would stop against the end of the lead pipe. And then you're also going to measure a mark that you put on your mouthpiece. And you're going to do a little math and subtract them. Um, and it's a very simple measurement to do. Uh, to review, you want to adjust your gap or have the gap set on a new trumpet for you simply because it can completely change the way the instrument feels to you. If you've played a dozen Bach trumpets and you think they all feel in inconsistent except for one, most likely the big difference between all of them is the gap adjustment. How long that lead pipe was or how far your mouthpiece goes into that specific receiver is probably slightly different on all of them and one of them is probably optimum to you. And That's probably why you love that one Bach trumpet over all the others. There could be other factors involved but that's the primary one that most people don't know about and it's usually what you know causes that Bach mystique of which one is good or not. Um, also one last note, our new 5mm modular mouthpiece system will soon be available and that system will allow you to put different backbore shanks on your mouthpieces so you could have a taper like this which is a Morris 1 taper with different lengths so you can set your gap or you can change out that shank and put in one of our new shanks that will allow you to use an adjustable gap receiver and in that case you can adjust the gap yourself all day long every day and you'll know exactly where it is because there will be marks on there that tell you where it is so keep in mind the 5mm modular mouthpiece system will soon be available and that will solve our gap issues thanks for watching